hold on, rewind. I was on mute. Oh, were you on mute? Yeah. I, I was like, oh no, my headphones. <laughs> I guess we found our clip. <laughs> <laughs> I I did air horns and everything. Hey everyone, welcome to Casual FC, a World Cup preview pod, at least for a short while. I'm your host, Mario Salazar, with my co-host, Angela Morales. If you're catching us in the middle of our series, guess what? We have a first episode that recaps all things World Cup. So go back, listen to that one. It'll kind of help prepare you and share it with a friend. Give them something to learn. Just a recap on how to watch everything. Fox is going to be the official broadcaster for English language in the U.S., so anything on the Fox network, Fox, FS1, FoxSports.com, the Fox app, any streaming apps like YouTube TV, Fubo, Sling, all of those, you know, you've, you've probably <laughs> signed up and forgot to delete most of those. So the one thing is to think about when looking at all of those is that if you are going to be streaming most of these, that you're going to have to have a TV login. So ask for someone's get your own, do what you got to do, but, you know, have fun and watch all of those. Telemundo is going to be the official broadcaster in Spanish in the U.S. That means all the matches will be on Telemundo and Universo um, channels. All matches will also be streaming in Spanish on Peacock, which that just makes life a lot easier. <laughs> just go ahead and stream it from <laughs> Peacock. And as we've been saying from before, if you if it's easier to watch it, Watch it in Spanish. It's just more exciting. It's more fun. They, the announcers care more. There's more passion. Uh, we might be biased because we're both <laughs> we're both Latino we're here. Both of, but yeah, we're both of the Latino variety. <laughs> exactly. Keep an eye on all our social feeds as we're going to be posting TV schedules and upcoming matches once we get out of the group stages too. So we'll be able to tell you where to find it, what time to find it, and if you have time to go hit a bar beforehand. So now on to group B, we've got Australia, the Republic of Ireland, Nigeria, and Canada. This is another one of those episodes where you might be asking yourself, hey, why are we covering this? Who's playing on here? That's an angel. This is an angel on loan episode. We've got Vanessa Gilles. She is playing crown, on- crown, 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 crown. Like the scoring machine, the best defender, like one of the best defenders, if not the best defenders in women's soccer. Pam, 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 Vanessa G. Yeah. yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs> that, yeah, we miss her. A and lot. She is on loan at Lyon in the French League, but she will be playing for Canada. Watch our Angels on loan. She, her match will also be on July 20th. It'll be Nigeria versus Canada. And the great thing is that it'll be in the afternoon. We're not yeah, going like to like prime time. Not prime it's time. not hard. <laughs> so on the twentieth, we're going to have New Zealand at midnight, right in the morning, mm -hmm. from Wednesday going into Thursday. But to see Vanessa, you're going to be able to see her that same day, just later on in the afternoon. <laughs> Again, Nigeria versus Canada. It's going to be at seven thirty Pacific time, seven thirty p.m. on Fox. The main broadcast, NBC Universo for Spanish language and also Peacock streaming for Spanish language. So let's dig into these players and countries. Yeah, definitely. So Canada is a team to watch. They are a huge threat to the defending champions, the USA, which I feel like every anyone who has come close to women's soccer in the last few years knows. They were Every, the everyone's a threat or a competitor to the U.S. Yeah, we're but just... they're a big one. Yeah, they're a legit a one. one. Yeah, they won the gold medal at the 2021 Olympics or 2020. How are you classify it? The last Olympics where we did not win gold. They did. So, yeah, it's one of those. They are a fantastic team. 
they have a, I want to say close to half, if not more than half of their national team play in the NWSL. We've got, let me see, on the Thorns, we've got Adriana Leone, who is on loan from the Thorns to Manchester United. Christine Sinclair, which we'll get into in a second. We've talked about her and how she makes a goal smaller in Kayleen Sheridan from the Wave, Quinn and Jordan Hotema from the Rain, the Dash have Sophie Schmidt, Michelle Prince, and Alicia Chapman, who we talked about on the Dash episode. And then the interesting thing is that defender Jade Rose was actually forced to withdraw from camp and the World Cup selection due to an injury. So the Washington Spirits, Gabriel Carl, was selected as her replacement, which is like a super bummer, but also super great for the player who gets to come up and get their call up for that. It's such a weird thing when that happens. Yeah, you're you're so celebrating sad, getting but, there. Yeah. But then you're, you're like, half oh. celebrating someone getting injured. So it's exactly. not. Exactly. Yeah. Like nobody, nobody wants that. <laughs> That'll be a great opportunity for someone new to representing right. for their country. And it's one of those where that, I think, overall as a whole, makes a team a little more threatening, like a little scarier, because you don't know them in that combination the way you would with their regular starters or their the folks that have been on the team for a while. So that way it can throw other teams off in their scouting. At least I would assume so. That's how it works in other sports. So <laughs> <laughs> I would assume it's the same thing. Alrighty, so I said Christine Sinclair. We've talked about her a little bit on previous ACFC Thorns matchup episode. She is insane. So Sink is their captain. She is leading them in experience and like experience and maturity and wisdom on the pitch in general. But this is where it gets quite crazy because she's also, along with Marta, making her sixth career World Cup appearance. So, yeah, That's a like long career that, yeah, to stay healthy enough to play that that long, to stay relevant enough, I guess is the right word because there's plenty of players who just age out of national teams just by practice or injury or all kinds of things, but to stay so important on top of her game yeah on top of her game important to her team that that's a veteran leadership if i've ever seen it because <laughs> if a world cups what every four years so that's 24 years of world cups or a uh, playing soccer and that's international in the nwsl like all over the place so there's so much to learn for those newer players from sync she leads soccer like men's women's leads international soccer play with international goals scored she's an absolute legend when you you've outscored every men's player like you can call ronaldo the goat messi the goat you can have the argument about it but sorry fellas sing has got to beat <laughs> she has scored 190 international goals no big deal. Dang. Yeah, and 323 international appearances with the Canadian team. So no big deal, I guess. Like, just another day's work. <laughs> it's wild. Like, her tenure, I think that's what I was looking for earlier, her tenure with the Canadian national team is one to be incredibly proud of for Canadians and for her. It's just one of those things where it's, it. she's a force to be reckoned with, which if you have been watching the NWSL at all is obvious. So it, I, I can't wait to see her play on the international pitch like this in this environment now knowing what I know. Yeah. And then oh, I do see a note here where we wrote down she hopes to become the first player to score in six different World Cups. Right. So remember, Marta's also done that from for Brazil. So that's going to be like head to head. Who's going to do it first? They're both uh, going to, I'm putting it on record, I'm 100% sure they'll both do it. They're both going to, they're both going to hit that yeah. mark. Oh, yeah. 100%. It's Marta's last World Cup. 100% she's scoring. Like, I uh, yes. And so is Sink. 100%. I don't okay. know which game. I don't know what round. 100%. They're both scoring this World Cup. <laughs> it's just going to be a matter of who's the first one to do it. 
All right, all right, we're gonna we're gonna go a little off the cuff right here, and then let's see. So July twentieth will be Canada's first shot, and Sinclair's first shot to uh, break the record. It very well could or, happen or in that game. <laughs> break the record very well could happen in that game, and then Brazil doesn't get a chance till wow, really till the twenty fourth. Am I looking at this a little wrong? Yeah, yeah, they don't get a chance till the twenty fourth. So. Oh, do you think do you think if Sinclair doesn't break it in their first match that Marta will oh yeah I think she definitely will it's against Panama which is a debutante team yeah so she's probably oh. got the edge there so yeah <laughs> sink you you've got your work cut out for you in De- in trying yeah. to break that record sink's gonna have a tougher go I think the first round than Marta will so we'll see. We'll see. I th- These are going to be games to watch. You're going to see history regardless. Obviously, every match you're going to see history in some way. But you're going to see top top shelf, high echelon players showing out. Oh, geez, that's going to be... That's, actually, okay. Now I'm more excited about that match, knowing that <laughs> thing that I'm looking for. Um, and we haven't even talked about ha- the other half of that match in Nigeria yet. So... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Right. It'll be a fantastic matchup. All right. So let's, who are we looking out for? Let's name these. Cause we, like you said, Canada is one of these teams, just like Brazil, there's a ton of NWSL players. So <laughs> if you're, if you're the casual fan here and this is world's biggest stage, all these players are going to be playing, right? you're going to see some crazy stuff. You're going to see some great games you're going to see all of that and guess what they're going to come back to the nwsl and finish off the season and keep playing here locally where you can go watch them when they come absolutely so they'll have different so numbers when they come you. back yeah <laughs> sometimes <laughs> not all the time okay so we were talking about the the replacement gabrielle she is all number right. 16 yes number 16 and then we've the... got We've got the three players from the dash. Sophie Schmidt is number 13. Nichelle Prince is number 15. And Alicia Chapman is number two. And then from the oil rain, we've got Quinn, number four. And really quick, I forgot to mention this. We'll probably mention it during a rain podcast. But Quinn is one of the very first out transgender and non-binary players in the world. But the key thing there is out because players have existed in the spectrum of gender and sexuality. It's pretty dope. <laughs> Quinn's super cool <laughs> in general, but having somebody on an international stage who's out and representing their community in such a wonderful way is super, super important visibility and representation wise. Also, went the route of just the single name. It's just so cool. Marta Quinn. There you go. Like, same, yeah, ta da. Just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> then we've got from Portland, we've got Adriana Leon, who's woo, number 19. Right. On loan at Man United, so you may or may not. On the national team, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Christine Sinclair is number 12. Hard to miss. And that's the one you're going to keep your eye on because if that goal goes in. Definitely. And And then then last but certainly not least, Kaylin Sheridan, number one in the goal. Per usual, hard to miss. Yeah. (laughs) She's just chilling by herself. (laughs) So who else do we got? Okay, so next up we have I- the Republic of Ireland. This is one of the debutante teams. During their send-off, it was so cool. The very first Irish national team, women's national team from 1973 welcomed them onto the stage or onto the pitch to to be awesome. presented to their fans. Yeah, so cool. I immediately started crying. Like, it was one of those, oh my God, this is what sports is all about moments for me. <laughs> It was beautiful to see, like, the, not necessarily the torch passing, but, like, the historic nature of the first, the 1973 team and this 2023 team, like, representing country and the pride that goes into that and what Ireland went through. So many things. Yeah. I, that's the part that I really hope they talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Like, those are the stories they need to tell about Ireland. There are three players we should watch, mostly because they're NWSL players, and people will 
think these names are familiar. I believe we've talked about two of them already. Right? True, we have. Yeah. <laughs> so first up for the Irish, we have Sinead Farley from Gotham. She is making a return not only to the NWSL this season, but also international play. Seeing her back on the pitch is so incredibly important and so wonderful. And I'm just really glad to see her out there. Also from Washington Spirit, Marissa Shiva or Sheva. This is one of those hard ones along with Sinead's last name because it depends. Are you like English, American English, British English, Irish? How are you pronouncing this? So I'm very sorry. Again, if it's a long E or a short E, I'm not sure. But she'll be representing as well. And then from the North Carolina Courage, Denise O'Sullivan. She just reached 100 international caps. So she's been on the pitch with the international team 100 times, which is super cool. Unfortunately, she got wrecked (laughs) in the not-so-friendly Columbia game Get, or game against Colombia that ended 20 minutes in due to the level of physicality. Yeah, the, they just had to call the game. Cause yeah, they're just like, no. Someone like, forgot to tell them that they were playing a friendly before the yeah, actual tournament yeah, like started. Nobody's supposed to get hurt. She's reportedly yeah. okay. Just lots of bruises. Yeah. But she got taken off in a stretcher. I wasn't watching. I like don't understand what occurred. There's a lot of controversy coming out of I, that not so friendly game. <laughs> I, I just remember sending you yeah. like the link, being like, "What just happened?" And you yeah. res- you were like, "Dude, she got rocked." Yeah. <laughs> it was like it was, she was off on a stretcher, and it was just bad. And I really hope that long term she's very okay because short term she was not. Like the team was waiting to release any updates on her until folks in Ireland were awake. Like, it was that big of a deal where it was like, we'll hold this till the morning local time because it would be national news. So I'm very curious how Ireland bounces back from that with their opening in the group. Also Columbia, but that's for a different episode. It's just a really weird situation. Everybody who I saw that was watching the game was equally as confused as to why it was the way it was. We'll see. But I'm excited to see Ireland play. They've been putting up a good show in their friendlies and in different matchups leading up to the World Cup. So I think they're actually going to have a pretty decent showing. Nice. I, I It's always great to hear that a debutante team has been doing really good leading up to it, which means don't count them out. Right. If you count them out, you're the one that's, that's gonna, on you. Yeah. That's on you. <laughs> you're the one that's going to feel it. And, and you know, they've, Especially, it's one of those things where those debutante teams are going to have a little bit of extra hunger. They want to prove oh, something, yeah. right? They've granted they've already proved what they needed to prove. The fact that they've qualified it, that they're here. Yeah, it's but, like they want to prove themselves even more, but also they have nothing to lose, which is the best and most dangerous com- like combination <laughs> yeah. for a competition yeah. like this. It's yeah, the you're people here. who yeah. Where some teams have everything to lose, other teams have nothing to lose. And they can just go and enjoy the fact that they're there and that's and have fun. There's no pressure at this point. It's interesting to think of the feeling, I'm going to say shame, but I don't want to make it that harsh. But (laughs) if Canada, like, didn't make it out of the groups. Yeah. Versus if Ireland didn't make it, Republic of Ireland right. didn't make it out of the groups. Republic of Ireland didn't make it out of the groups. Everybody goes, everybody writes it off as, oh, it's relatively expected. Team. Yeah. yeah. They just, they need the experience. Maybe next right. World Cup, if they qualify, they'll have a little bit more. But right. then you get to one of the like powerhouses like Canada, and then you're just like, what like, happened? What happened? To you? <laughs> yeah. Did your whole so, team, did all of their feet fall off? What? <laughs> so they can go as hard as they want and try to make it. Mm-hmm. And who knows? Yeah. Who knows? This is the best part. <laughs> okay. So players to watch. All of these are NWSL players that we get to enjoy when they come back from the World Cup. From the Courage, we have Denise O'Sullivan, and she's number 10. Washington Spirit, we've got Marissa Shiva, number 20. And then from Gotham, Sinead Farley, we have number 17. So 
that's just awesome for them to be able to get to the this giant stage but also awesome for us for having so many players did you see the stat about that the nwsl posted mm-hmm. where there are every single team all 12 teams have representation in the world cup it's amazing it's that 60 is, some players or something like that or 60 yeah, percent of the league like some huge amount and for a league that's 10 years in to have such an international roster is so cool so cool so that's awesome now and that leads us into our next team in the group which is nigeria nigeria are also known as the super falcons pam 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 i love nigeria i love watching nigeria in international competition basketball soccer olympics i think it's because i have a lot of friends of nigerian descent which is unintentional but really cool but nigerian culture around their teams is so cool like it's so supportive it's so communal it's beautiful it's i think that's one of my favorite things about watching the world cup is watching how how these countries support their teams and support like these national fan bases and they'll travel yeah there there will be multitudes of fans from each country traveling Mm -hmm. down to australia and new zealand and they're just it's the best national pride event you can have maybe even more so than the olympics because of how important soccer is around the world compared to olympics as a whole yeah yeah because the olympics you have with the wide range of sports and stuff like Mm -hmm. you might be there because your country is good at like this one or two like these two sports it's like fencing and jujitsu and then somebody else is there for greco-roman wrestling and javelin like just and each of those sports has their own international competition i and i think that's something that unless you follow each individual sport that's represented in the Olympics on their own, especially in America, you don't always know that there's all these other competitions going on because we're so hyper-focused on the Olympics. Like track and field, I watch Diamond League and World Championships every second I can. Like, I will watch every event if possible. Stream them, all of that. I've been watching more just kind of random Mm -hmm. sports streams, just anything that comes up on like ESPN, mainly because... For the longest time, Saturday mornings with my kids was not Saturday morning cartoons because they got enough cartoons with all the streaming apps. Like she knows yeah. how to, she knows how to open like Netflix Kids and like <laughs> Disney and buy all by herself. Yeah. But Saturday mornings has been Saturday morning soccer. Oh, that's awesome. Or Saturday morning just sports. Sport. And crazy enough. Like my daughter loves motorsports, so she loves watching like indie indie car racing and like Formula That's cool. One. Like she has no idea what's happening. She sees like a pink car and she's like, "Oh, the pink car! There it goes!" <laughs> or she will lose her mind if she sees a, a car with the American flag, just because oh, it's yeah. something she recognizes. It's she knows, yeah. But I'll be flipping through all the things, and then she's, like, "I want to watch swimming," or uh, okay. "I want to watch track." Yeah. Or I want to watch, or she'll see the preview of something, some like image for a track and field meet. Mm-hmm. She's like, I want to watch that. And I'm like, yeah, sure. While we're yeah. eating our pancakes, let's, <laughs> let's watch it. So Perfect. it's been great seeing all of that, just access to have all of those kind of different things available so easily and so readily. And yeah. it does make you think that, yeah, the American sports aren't the only thing around right like yes the nba the wnba the (laughs) nhl like those are like the leagues people think about but there's so much yeah and the funny thing is we think about the nhl and it's wait we're thinking about american hockey when there's countries that like live in ice and yeah (laughs) and live and breathe hockey and people are like i don't know why anybody would like that's not even important it's like you need to go to, like, colder places and understand yeah. the culture of hockey there. Like, we forget that not everything is American in history and American-based, especially when it comes to sports. Yeah. But all that to say, so, 
pumped for Nigeria. Yeah. So pumped. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> I was like, how are we going to get back there? We're going to do it. We're going to do it. it. <laughs> but getting back to all of this, I'm just saying that like the nationalistic pride that everybody has when they show up to these events is mm -hmm. by far the best and in a sense, most pure expressions. And yes, the African yeah. teams are they, always oh, they represent. amazing. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. like the their traditional wear, their chants, just they are enthusiastic. They're the supporters cultures. The yeah. SGs that we always talk about. They're the ones chanting the full they just, night. It's just culturally theirs, I think. <laughs> They're so pumped. And it's so fun to see all the people. Like what in the 2019 World Cup, this is related, I promise. So <laughs> I'm at my friend Emily's house and we work together. One of our coworkers, her family's Nigerian. Like her mom is, she's first generation here. So Moji came over and showed up wearing green and white. Was Nigeria playing? No. <laughs> Did she care? Absolutely not. It was like, oh yeah, I'm here to watch the US women, but like, this is also my home country. Like, regardless, she was very much like, let's go. And that's exactly it. There's something, especially for folks who are of multiple backgrounds, there is something so important that only comes out during World Cup or during international sporting events. It's awesome. Yeah, it, I love it. Sorry, everyone, for our tangent. It's just, it's so, this is what the World Cup does. It's so exciting. It's so fun. And I hope you got a little bit out of those, however many, those five, ten minutes that we right. just went. So, again, let me just start again. Then Nigeria, we're talking about Nigeria. They're also known as the Super Falcons. They're a team that has had an amazing history with just being at the World Cup and playing all this. They were quarter finalists in 99. So the big thing that most US women soccer fans that that think about the 99ers. Yeah, they, like were they were there and they were pretty damn close They're They are only one of seven federations to make the World Cup every single year. So think about the there's 32 teams right now that have qualified right mm -hmm. it yes granted it hasn't been 32 teams all the time but but that's even they, more important they've qualified every single year were teams <laughs> exactly. who were who were playing like not to say that it's easy to qualify now but it's easier to qualify now than it was in 99 or 91 yeah this is it's exciting for them yeah and okay so let's get into the players because I, I just talk about being excited about watching nigeria play in, <laughs> yeah. just in general <laughs> You know what? I'm just going to pull up when Nigeria plays. Oh, wait. No, yeah. they are playing. They're oh, playing yeah. with Canada. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, we already told you. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Players to watch. Now, we have a... Normally, a lot of these teams have NW Cell players, and we're focusing on them. But you know what? We've got another player, too. The first player that we're going to call out here is Asisat Ashawala, and she's playing... She's coming to the World Cup from Barca. She is a five-time African Player of the Year, and she is also the first African woman to be nominated for the Ballon, Ballon d'Or. And we, in our previous episode, we talked about the what the Ballon d'Or is. It's basically it's become the, the world's the, best player. <laughs> world's best player. I, I, after our episode, I was like, did we like make that up? Let me go back. And so I look. I just to reassure yeah, myself panic. i looked it up yeah. the panic of oh no someone's gonna yell at us so i looked it up and yes it totally started as a french thing like mm -hmm. french newspapers french sports writers they started it it was a thing just for the french league then it became a thing for the european league but ever since basically 2007 i want to say it's just been best player in the world whole globally entire world now she's the first african woman to be nominated for it that's that major is, that's major that's just so much that says so much in so little <laughs> yeah exactly that's exactly what it is like it says so much in what one two three four five six words seven words yes <laughs> like you're just like oh you need no other statistic but that at this point Ta -da! Yeah, it's, it's insane <laughs> Be afraid. Um, be very afraid. <laughs> She's great. 
And then if we're going down the list of NWSL players, so that players that we get to watch back home, we've got in the Houston Dash, we've got Michelle Alozier. In Racing Louisville, we have Uchenna Kanu, number 12. Guys, you, I really wish we did do video podcasts where you can see You can see me <laughs> like coaching along. <laughs> Co- coaching me in all of these names. Not that any name is particularly difficult or anything like that. I just don't want to screw it up so bad where it's just offensive. I'm really trying and I felt so bad with the French names that I'm just like, I, okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. And then for Gotham... We have Ifi Onumanu. Yes, I got the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so yeah, we've got all of this. We've got Francesca Ordega, formerly from the NWSL, but she is a major goal scoring threat. So that's just another player to keep an eye out for, another player that's probably going to be lethal on the ball. And then, last but not least, we've got Tony Payne who was a first-round draft pick, but never actually ended up playing in the league. But you know what? Playing for the national team, playing for Nigeria, so whoever drafted... Yeah, it one-ups the, oh, I didn't play in your league, but okay, I'm still on my national team, so okay, that's fine. Or I'm still playing internationally. Yeah, there's so much to be said about the women who play on the Nigerian team. They're so good. (laughs) <laughs> and that's, I said before, culturally, I'm excited to watch the Nigerian fans to talk to my friends who are Nigerian and have ties to the country. I'm excited to watch these women because, like, we talked about Michelle Lozier in the game against the Dash where she just got beat up. She <laughs> she was such a threat, but at the same time, we were able to shut her down. And That was that was the red card match. Yeah, that was the red card match. <laughs> we briefly talked about Ify in the Gotham match. So... We haven't talked about Lichena Canoe yet because we haven't played racing since we started the podcast, but that's coming up. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I'm excited. I know I've said it a million times, but that's just the truth. I'm excited yeah, for I'm excited. Nigeria. I, I, I'm, I honestly, I'm excited for the whole thing. I Yeah, like this group, can everyone qualify, please? Like for the love of all of us, <laughs> please. I, I will say that since starting the podcast i'm a lot more excited Mm -hmm. i think that just goes into knowing more about all of this and this is exactly why we want to bring all of you along (laughs) that's the whole point bring all of the casuals in if you can have someone listen to these episodes and they get a glimpse of our excitement and we're like i just want to check that out let me see what's happening yeah that's how people get hooked and then your friend emily She's got you hooked for the entire time. Emily, thanks for all the reposting and the likes and everything. And Yeah, uh, she's so hyped for World Cup. She she was watching the last U.S. men's match at her her niece's quinsay. Somebody's quinsay. Like, she is the soccer watching queen. She said that her family was mad at her. Like, it's a whole... She loves soccer. She played growing up, so she's very much... She's going to laugh so hard when she hears this. But, yeah, it's a good We're totally going to... We're going to have to figure out some watch party for ourselves okay so (laughs) again let's go over how to find these players so asat ashoala is number eight the onumanu is number six michelle alozier is number 22 jenna kanu is 12 francesca ordega number 17 and tony payne number seven Woo. All right. I went through it. All right. You did it. Last did but certainly it. not least. Last one we've of the got co-hosts. The co-hosts. Yes. We've got Australia in this group. Australia. We've been giving nicknames to the ones we know. And everybody <laughs> should. You're going to hear the nickname to death. Yes. Australia. Watch the documentary. Attention. We've got, <laughs> pay attention. New Zealand. We've got the Ferns. Mm-hmm. And Australia. We have the Matildas. Which was. A pretty cool thing when I was like looking up, trying to get information about other players, things like that. (laughs) As a send off, not really a send off because they're not going anywhere. They're in Australia. (laughs) But as a kind of like, yay, World Cup. The 23 players that made the Australian roster, the final roster, 
were all presented by 23 Australian girls named Matilda. That's amazing. I didn't know that. Oh, my they, God. They searched the country for Matildas. Oh, and Matildas presented fantastic. the Matildas, which is that's, just that's amazing. amazing. Yeah, that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, Australia is going to be a powerhouse, I think. Yeah, Australia has a bunch of just NWSL past players. So you, if you've been a fan for a while, you've probably recognized a bunch of names like in Australian just match history right now their current coach is a former u.s assistant coach so, you know that knowledge from the inside the, the call is the coming from, from inside the, inside the house, the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm not oh, cutting that man. out yeah there, there's going to be some tactics some if we see australia later on there's going to be some maybe some tactics shifting uh, to be needed yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll have to adapt to... There's going to be a lot of film watching once the, <laughs> the groups have been declared and who's making it out and all of that. There's going to be a lot of regrouping and reassessing based on those matchups. So we can't talk Australia without talking about Sam Kerr. Like the Sam Kerr. The Sam Kerr. You know what? I think you can... I, Sam Kerr has one of those short names where it's just going to be her full name. Yeah. But it's you can Sam totally Kerr. go Kerr. Mm-hmm. No, you can't go Kerr. No, you can't. That no. just sounds weird. Sam, no, Kerr. Sam Kerr. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sam Kerr holds the single season goal scoring record for the NWSL, which is 18 goals. No big deal. No big deal. Do Meaning... a backflip on the pitch. It's whatever. It, no, mm. Okay. Okay. Ugh. We were just talking about this earlier today. And this one in particular, like out of the list, is actually relevant Nike football has done yes. an amazing job with their player highlights and their player spots, their little one minute commercials. Oh, um, so good. We, we will be talking about the Rapino one in the next episode. I but, love it so much. But the Sam Kerr one and her backflip. It's dope. It's, it's so like dope. the jersey switch. Like the, it's just, oh, it's so good. Sam Kerr is a personality. Like, She's also dating Christy Mewis on our national team. So the call is absolutely coming from inside. <laughs> Christy Byrne not be giving away secrets, yeah. nothing. Around this time, it's pretty yeah. much, I don't know you. Yeah, who are you? Yeah. Sam had posted that she was so happy that Christy got the call up. And she was like, this is the last nice thing I'll say to you until August. That's yeah. it. Just I done. Mean, that's. I think that's how fans should be. It should be. Yeah. Like, I will, like, we're human beings. We should, everybody should just be respectful and let's have a beer. Let's hang out. Let's talk. Let's banter. Let's have fun. Whistle starts. I Bye. hate you. Yeah. Bye. This is Bye. my team. You're going to lose. And yeah. then whistle blows at the end of 90 and be like, yeah, it was a good match. Like, that how did you a, no, feel? You want to hang out, watch the next match? That's the best part of the World Cup. I know we keep saying everything is the best part, but that's, <laughs> that's... <laughs> everything is the best part. But yeah, also random news about Sam Kerr. If anyone was paying attention to the hard launch of her and Christy Mewis' relationship during the last Olympics, there was a whole thing that I think Huff posted. Some, whoever dropped the pictures, I don't remember now, but there were like so much sportsmanship and kindness at the Olympics after the US Australia game. And it's like Sam and Christy on the pitch just like seeing each other for the first time in two months. <laughs> and like very much a couple and everybody's got guys their da- news hello they're dating this is <laughs> thank you for the con- the confirmation but it was branded as sportsmanship and kindness and from the previous ep- one of the previous episodes i don't know which one it is anymore my girlfriend and i basically started talking to each other again after meeting each other two years prior but because of the Olympics, and this was a very like, <laughs> pivotal conversation about sportsmanship and kindness. It's my favorite dumb soccer thing that I will probably hold on to for the rest of my life. Because <laughs> it's funny. Like, there's so many memes that came out of it. Oh, sportsmanship and kindness on the pitch. And it's like, they're dating, guys. Uh, <laughs> like, it's so blatantly obvious from the pictures that they're like, oh, my God, I missed you so much. Like, how's trading going? Like, it's very, much, very, like relationshipy conversations yeah. this is not platonic pictures i'll yeah, find no. it and i'll send it to you mario afterwards you're gonna laugh so hard <laughs> you're gonna be like why do people think this 
yeah. But yeah, anyway, that has the, nothing the, to do with anything, but it's important. Just a clueless writer culture. that was like, a yes. clueless writer that saw a picture and was like, oh, sportsmanship. Let's write about that. Yeah, uh, so sweet. One team 500, won, one team 500 lost. words about sportsmanship. Yes. Honest to God. And you're like, this is not the sportsmanship you think it is, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back to relevant conversation about the World Cup. Back to players to watch, yes. <laughs> I'm going to say that we're recording these really late and we're recording them back to back. So I think we're a little more loopy than normal, yeah. but and, and I'm coming off the WNBA Ulster weekend in Vegas where it was 120 and I think my brain melted a little bit. So yeah, yeah. Angela go. here is jet setter right now. So <laughs> she's just coming back. Okay. So Katrina Lee Gorey is returning from just having a baby. I will say as the male in this podcast group here and the father of the room. The father in the room, yes. The father of two kids, not the father of the pocket. Please, please. Okay. Honestly, props where props are due. And just one of the reasons doing this is to learn about the sport, to be able to teach my daughter about it, but also to teach her how awesome women are. Mm -hmm. Not can be. Are. They just are. Yeah. They just are. Like, there's no yes. Uh, I'm... Ronaldo is Ronaldo, and there's <laughs> shit about him. I might have to mark this one explicit. Messi yeah, is Messi yeah. is the goat. He's a multiple award winner, but he's the goat of the men's game. He's the Remember, goat of the men's game. We talked game. about Sink. We've talked about yes. Marta. Yes, I agree. I agree. But the fact that women can do so much with all of this and not bat an eye on any of it, and that's the kind of that's the joke. It's funny. Because it's true, but you get the like memes of a feather whipping across Neymar's face and him like rolling. <laughs> Do you remember the that became? Yeah. No, but the meme specifically about Neymar from two World Cups ago, where it was just, it was him where he was like comically just rolling around. He even had yes. to apologize because he yes. was so embarrassed afterwards of the joke Being that he so was dramatic. making. Yeah. Like, so dramatic, but I think that's one of my favorite, one of my favorite player flopping gifts ever of people <laughs> were just, people were taking him rolling and then putting him into a bunch of other like situations yeah. of rolling down a hill or like rolling and mm -hmm. like hitting a boulder, like so yeah. many things that it, it's part of the game, right? It's also called like the dark arts when you're, especially when right. you, you can also call them like when games the get a little, yeah. when games get a little conk caffey. <laughs> it's a verb where they're just shit housing and just wasting like all of that stuff. But yeah, then you come to the women's game, they will get rocked and then be like, what? Get back up and then just keep yeah. going because they're playing. Like right? in, I think um, it was 2019, one of the players for England had a like gash on her head. She's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Everybody's like, you're bleeding from your head. <laughs> Go sit down. She's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. What? Like it's such so, a different, it's different in the it's women's It's a different game. mentality. Yeah. And so going back to Katrina Lee and having a baby, I, I don't want to I don't want to make it a thing where I'm like, women are amazing. They can have babies and they can play sports. And it's not that it's but it's also it's but it is right. It's like you it's, don't want to say, oh, wow, look at this nice thing that you did. And then now you get to go back to work. It's, no, you rearranged your body, created a whole ass human and then rearranged your body again. And now you're playing a sport. At the top level. At the top level in the top tournament. Like, what? Same with Crystal Dunn, Alex Morgan. Like, it, all of these women who have had kids and come back to sport blow my mind. Yes. I yes. completely I... understand the dedication to their craft. But holy shit. It's I... so much. I will give props all day and all night to yeah. every mom out there whether it's whether it's your kid because you carried them it's your kid because mm -hmm. you adopted them it's your kid because whatever the situation was yeah the fact that you're a parent the fact that you're a mom is just it's makes paramount. you like a, it's a hundred times more of a person than most people and the fact that they can just do that and function i I can barely function as it is when I'm trying to remember <laughs> what I ate for breakfast. But, and then my wife is like on top of shit all the time. She's like, I had this, the kids had this, we did this. And you're like, high five, cool. Yeah. Exactly. And that's not to say that you're like 
an absent parent because you're absolutely not. It's one of those things where it's like there's such a different like innate sense of self and innate sense of what to do in a situation that comes out of motherhood that differs. It's different for fathers. It's like a different connection. And it's so interesting to me to see as somebody who's I will be the best aunt ever. (laughs) <laughs> but You're i don't fun want aunt. oh i'm the fun aunt i'm the cool aunt absolutely yeah so bringing that all back katrina lee just amazing for returning after having a baby being at the top of her game being at the world cup playing with australia yeah there's just yeah and then the next note, I think I will let you go on because you might have more info than I do about yeah. the goalkeeping union. So Australia as a whole has a union for their goalkeepers, which is super neat because, as they said, goalkeeping is basically a completely different sport than regular <laughs> soccer. Because I mean, you're you not, do have you do yeah, have balls like, flying at you at like crazy at least, speeds. Yeah. That the strategy is different, the the style of play is different. Like it's such a different mental game. But Australian soccer players have put together this goalkeeping union to basically help support each other better. It's a very cutthroat world. There's way fewer goalkeepers than there are every other position on the pitch. Like you get one goalkeeper with a, a one or two backups versus four forwards. Let's say. Or people who can play multi-position, like utility players, basically. And so Australia is just, no, we need to work to better the game for the keepers so that way they have more protections and they are being treated fairly because it's such a different environment for them. Training is different. Everything is different for keepers. And it's such an interesting thing to learn about. I didn't know that they had a union before before looking this up and since it's apparently strike summer here in the u.s like we might as well talk about it (laughs) yeah 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 and that's amazing and everything is spot on they entire they train differently they play the game differently they can touch the ball with their hands they're the only ones that can fundamental of the game is different (laughs) yeah that's pretty amazing for them and then in the nwsl we've also got some representation here with racing louisville in alex chidiak To recap all the players that we just talked about, the amazing Sam Kerr will be number 20. The amazing Katrina Lee Gori will be number 19. And Alex Chidiak will be number 8 for the Matildas. So with all of that, we've reached the end of our group. Man, I'm excited for this. I'm like, (laughs) I said it earlier, but can every one of these teams qualify out of the group, please? (laughs) <laughs> I'll be extra good. I don't, I won't ask it'll for be anything a, from Santa It'll be a fun Christmas. tournament if they do. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be weird, but this group is definitely going to be one of my favorites to watch. So just as a quick reminder, the group B play on Thursday, July 20th. So in just a couple of days, given that we're recording this later than we thought we would at <laughs> 7.30 Pacific time. So 7.30 PM time on Fox Channel 11, if you don't have cable, or even if you do, I think some cable people, providers, whatever they're called, air it on like the regular network number. So there's no excuse not to watch it. I will say it many more times. If you're at a bar, a restaurant. Prime time, prime time at yeah, a bar. It, get the game on TV. Because if they put it on one, somebody else can be like, oh, I can't see that. Can you put it on over here? And then it'll just, next thing you know, a whole place is watching it. If you want to watch and listen in Spanish, NBC Universo or Peacock, remember what we said before, Spanish language broadcasts rarely go out. There's no Spanish speaking countries in this group. Predominantly, there's people who speak Spanish everywhere, but it will still be a solid representation of all of these teams. Man, I'm excited for this. Watch it. Just do you have plans Thursday? No. If you don't anymore, this is your plans. Nigeria versus Canada, 7.30 p.m. Pacific. Hopefully you made it to work because of the late game <laughs> from New Zealand. I, and my, then hopefully you're out of work, work by now. Is not ready for me after this week. 
<laughs> they're already going to be like, why are you so tired coming back from my little mini vacation to the WNBA All-Star Weekend? And I'm going to be like, because I melted. And now I'm going to be like, I don't know what sleep is. I get my work done. But I'm not actually here. Like, <laughs> I will get my work done. I will do it well. But I'm far more concerned about soccer for the next <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of our longer episodes because we are excited about this group our next episode or previous episode depending on how you listen to the, all these we'll be covering the u.s which get ready it's going to be another long one and it's gonna be so long and i'm just gonna be screaming the whole time get with it and we've got the drive to five with the women's national team, the U.S. women's national team. So it'll probably be another long one. We've got more coming at you. We're going to do a quick recap of all the other groups that don't have NWSL players. But here we go. All right. So if you've gotten this far, make sure you check us out on all of the different podcasting platforms. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Pod, Overcast. Other ones I don't know of or don't know the names of because I just listened to them on Spotify. You can also check us out on our website, casualfc.com, where you'll have a link to all the episodes and it will direct you to whichever streaming platform you want to listen to them on. All of our social channels, you can find us at casualfcpod, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, threads. I don't know any more that come up. We'll find a way to get ourselves there. Do us a favor. Help us out. Share the podcast, leave a comment. Let's have some fun.